Those not inclined toward the all-or-nothing fundamentalist theology may wonder what to do if they're approached by a group whose intentions seem unclear or even downright suspicious. Before you would commit heavily your money, your time, your resources, your energy to any organization, find out about it. Find out um, what the qualifications and credentials of the leaders are. Find out if people have left the group and are critical of it, and if so, why. You have been given a mind, and use it. You can question, use it. And, and, and beyond all of that, believe in yourself. Few groups are more controversial than the Church of Scientology, which was started as a self-help system called Dianetics in the 1950s by a science fiction writer named L. Ron Hubbard. Today, Scientology receives multi-millions of dollars from its members and has a brigade of showbiz celebrities ranging from Tom Cruise and John Travolta to Kirstie Alley and Juliet Lewis who sing its praises and are embraced at luxurious celebrity centers. I think it's the most important movement on the planet. Dianetics, the forerunner of Scientology, was first presented in an article in a cheap sci-fi magazine. Hubbard's subsequent book of the same name became the first self-help bestseller of the modern era. Dianetics has evolved into Scientology, a self-described pantheistic applied religious philosophy dedicated to self-discovery. God and, and uh, interpretations of that are left up to the individual. So you could be a Jewish Scientologist, you could be a, ba a Baptist in the Scientology, you could be a Catholic in the Scientology. Scientology is a religious philosophy that's designed to make life better. It's as simple as it is, it gives you the tools in life to just handle problems and just work out certain things. Scientology's adherents take auditing sessions with a lie detector-like device called an e-meter to rid themselves of inhibiting memories called engrams. And the auditor listens, they don't evaluate for you, they don't tell you what your problem is. And she just, or the person just points out where you should look. And basically you make the decision for yourself. No one tells you what your problem is. But according to former Scientologists, members aren't given the church's full liturgy until after taking many expensive courses. What price can you put on personal freedom? That's... Six, seven hundred dollars, I think. <laughs> probably, well, probably do it. It's, a, it's an individual choice, isn't it? That's how much you put on it. But it's, uh, it's an individual choice again, and uh, it's up to the person. And I think the other important thing is, in Scientology, there's no tithing, for example. It's a totally voluntary thing. But if you want to take a course, you have to pay for it. Sure, you pay a, a donation and you get exactly what you paid for. Do you sit home at night and think, gee, I wish I could take that expensive course? Well, sure, but I mean, that's the same way it is for a computer or a car. So, I mean, you just save up. Although Scientology executives deny it, former longtime members say that eventually followers are told that some of these engrams are the remnants of space aliens called body thetans, who were placed here by the galactic overlord Xenu. It's a very science fiction world. Um, it has a uh, galactic confederacy. It's a very romantic view of the world. I understand there's like a, a galactic overlord, Xenu. Is there a whole staff of characters, or is that not true? Oh, I, I don't think, I don't really know what you mean, what you're talking about. Originally, Scientology started out not as a religion, but as a collection of psychotherapeutic nostrums promoted and sold by Hubbard. Scientology grew out of what uh, began as an attempt to uh, help people deal with certain mental problems uh, as a psychology. The psychiatric and the psychological community, the, the scientific community, um, became very critical of his methods because they felt that they were very unscientific. The Scientology movement found itself fending off accusations of practicing medicine without a license, and Hubbard began distancing himself from the shrink establishment. Our psychiatry has to do with the insane, and we have nothing to do with the insane whatsoever. They, uh, the insane, uh, well, they're insane. Once the group declared itself a religion, Scientology mounted a lengthy court battle with the Internal Revenue Service for tax-exempt status. At one point, 11 Scientologists, including Hubbard's wife, were convicted of conspiracy and burglary of IRS offices. Actually, the people who did that were booted out of the church. It's got nothing to do with Scientology. And um, Mr. Yeah. Hubbard's wife was one of them. Right? Yeah, they were, out. they were, they were kicked out because. Did he dump her? Let's get a new wife? And... No, not necessarily. We're t saying that they were not accepted in the church as um, staff members anymore. In the end, the IRS granted Scientology the tax-exempt religious status it wanted, a move IRS spokesmen now declined to discuss. 
It should be noted that although Scientology was in constant contact with MTV about this program, church executives refused to be interviewed until just a few days before its initial broadcast, disturbed that we would be airing parts of our interview with Stacy Young, a Scientology staffer for 15 years and a one-time colleague of Lisa Goodman. Let's put it this way, she worked under me for some time, and I didn't, her level of competency was not up to what it should be, certainly her level of ethics was far below the other stuff. She was there for 15 years. Yeah. That's a long time. That's right. And um, it's a long time to uh, to not succeed, too. And, and Stacy did not. And frankly, I mean, to be honest with you, we were, we were glad to see her go. Scientology also took offense at the title phrase, the cult question. The definition of cult is a closed, secretive group. And that's not Scientology. Well, Scientology has a lot of secrets, right? I mean, the OT levels and stuff. There's some um, levels very high up, very just very a tiny fragment of Scientology is something that you don't learn about when you first work on the door. Scientology also claims to be a supporter of free speech, although opponents say that doesn't seem to apply to those who in any way criticize the church's practices. When Time magazine ran a cover story in 1991 describing Scientology as a ruthless global scam. The group filed a $416 million libel suit, and that case is still in court. The group has said seldom to win such suits, but the legal costs of fighting them can wreak financial havoc on defendants. Scientology is willing to spend any amount of money they need to. They don't care how much it costs. The, the purpose is not to make any money off of the litigation. The purpose is to um, silence the critic. We will use the legal arena to defend our First Amendment rights. Um, we're not the, a turn the other cheek type of religion. The legal battles surrounding new religions can have emotional as well as financial consequences. Take the case of Kathy Tonkin, who's currently embroiled in a legal dispute over a fundamentalist Christian group of which she was once a member. Her story begins, as it may yet end, with the loss of a loved one. I experienced a lot of a very painful experience. My husband was electrocuted one day. It was like one day, I'm um, 23 years old. and. Uh, you know, he's, he's gone, and um, I got mad at God. I got really mad at God, and I went uh, on a spiritual quest. Tonkin's quest led her to the Life Tabernacle Church, a small Pentecostal congregation in the suburbs of Seattle, to which she also brought her three sons, Tyson, Matthew, and Jason. Her misgivings about Life Tabernacle led her to leave the group after a year, but her troubles really began when she told her pastor that she intended to take her children out too. One day I got up and I just, I knew I had to get out. I knew I had to get out, so I just told my sons I'm not going back to church anymore. And they went and told him, and they said, if you follow her, if you follow your mother, you'll be a backslider. Your mother's going to hell, she's walked away from the Lord. And basically I was, I joined Satan's team. When my mother left, me and my brother Tyson were still living in the house. And uh, we uh, ended up leaving, got in a really bad argument with my mom, calling her worldly and stuff, and because she didn't want to go there no more. And Jason, Tyson, and Matthew went to live with other church members. You kind of feel, this is America. Those are my kids. You feel real violated. So I'd act quickly if I wanted my family back and I was willing to do anything. And so after weighing everything, I knew that I, I had to have them deprogrammed. Kathy Tonkin hired Rick Ross to deprogram her two minor children, Tyson and Matthew, and within a few days he was successful. Things didn't go so smoothly, however, with her older son, 18-year-old Jason. What was this deprogramming session like that you underwent? Who said I was programmed? I felt <laughs> like if I leave him alone and he doesn't get this information, I may never see him again, ever. And I wasn't willing to risk that. All Kathy really wanted, and all any of the parents that I've worked for really want, is just, can I have a few days to just talk with my kid? Can I and the rest of the family, the brothers, the sisters, can we just sit down and say, hey, we've got some concerns and we want to talk to you. What is wrong with that? I was jumped on by three men, handcuffed, duct taped, had a cinch strap put around my ankles, drug out to a van, and had they pinned me upside down, very, very violent and uh, unneeded. And um, four hour trip down to Ocean Shores and they tortured me for five days. He was fed very well. Um, you know, he had a ping pong table, we played ping pong. He had a jacuzzi in, his, in the master suite. No, I don't think that's abuse. They were trying to make me change my mind against my will. 
Jason was not kidnapped. It was his own mother who hired me. The victim of this, in my opinion, is my mother. It was her decision to intervene in her son's life in an effort to try and save him from a lot of unhappiness. This man, he conned my mom out of $20,000 to do this to me. We had to do what we had to do. And it has destroyed our family. Jason escaped and had Ross arrested, but Ross was later acquitted, which brings us back to the Church of Scientology, which sought Jason out and encouraged him to sue the church's arch enemy, the Cult Awareness Network, and Jason's deprogrammer, Rick Ross. This is a civil rights case. Jason Scott's civil rights were violated when he was kidnapped because of his religious belief. Now they're bleeding me dry. That's their purpose. I mean, they'll probably lose the case, but the object is to bankrupt me personally. Do you hope that one day the whole family will be back together? I mean, you think that's a possibility? Oh, I hope so, definitely. Um, I, I think that the love's strong enough. I do. I think I love kids. I'm not going to give up on them. I'm not going to stop praying for them. I miss my mother. I love my mother, and this is, it's been a five-year thing that has really affected us. Jason's case is scheduled to be heard this summer. Chances are it won't be the last of its kind. New religions continue to proliferate, and cults, dangerous ones, do exist. Whatever these organizations may say about their special connections to God and truth, the fact remains that no group has come up with all the answers to life's mysteries, and all religions are subject to serious questions. Don't let anyone talk you out of asking them. Come on, come on.